and welcome back to America's camp meeting, Prophetess Juanita Bain. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. From the bottom of my heart to the depths of my soul. Yes, Lord. Completely, yes. My soul says yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, from the bottom of my heart to the depths of my soul, my soul says yes, Lord. the Lord tonight for his goodness and his mercy toward me. I give him praise for what he has done, what he is doing. Thank him for the victory over sin and shame. Thank him for every fiery trial. Thank him for every blazing dart. Thank him for every tribulation. Because it's in these things I've come to know my God. Thank you, Jesus. Come to know him. He says in his word that we not all to not only know him in the power of his might, but in the fellowship of his suffering. Before I bring the word of the Lord tonight, certainly coming to camp meeting, it's always such a trying time for me because I don't make it a habit of just 
preaching something just to be preaching something. It's a major difference when you have to birth a word out than to just preach a word. And when you have to birth a word out, you encounter warfares that are not normal. And so coming to camp meeting this year has been a very trying season. But I'm here in the name of the Lord. Here by his grace and his power sharing with my spiritual father when I walked in the building. I wanted him to pray for me before I leave tonight. I got attacked with some kind of bacterial virus that began to eat my face and in my ears and in my scalp. I had to receive over a hundred injections to stop the bacteria. But when I told God that I would go, it wasn't based on whether or not I had hair or not. It wasn't based on whether or not the makeup was right, fat or skinny. And I told him yes, I told him I would go in spite of. Because I'm learning every day that ministry is not a fashion show. It's a dying to the flesh. It's not a place we try to impress each other. It's a place where we die to the flesh. And so tonight, hear the word of the Lord. Honor my spiritual father, Pastor Parsley who has indeed been a spiritual father, and my spiritual mother, Sister Parsley, who has indeed stood with me in prayer, stood by me, held my arms up, covered me. And so I stand here tonight as an honored daughter and not a bastard in the spirit. Honor the Lord for my own mother, who is in our midst, and to the young woman that the Lord is, has blessed me to be able to call friends, Sister Judy Jacobs. Never met in a long time a more pure spirit, someone who just loves God for being God. I, I have to say this, and... People may not understand this statement, those in ministry will. I was really surprised when I found out that Judy was saved for real. Because you know we can all get up here and do stuff. Don't mean we saved for real. So that was a pleasant surprise when I found out that she means Jesus behind closed doors like she does up here singing, there's no God like Jehovah. And that impressed me. Honor the Lord for all of the pastors and the elders and the saints of God that are in and even the people that are jammed in the overflow room. I bless the Lord for your life tonight. If you would get your Bibles and turn with me, if I can get a chair up here, I don't have enough room to lay some stuff. If I can just get a chair, just sit it right here for me. I'd appreciate that. I need to be able to stretch out a little bit. There's a purpose for this being a brand new prayer show, so just kind of bear with me a little bit. If you would go with me to the book of Leviticus. To the book of Leviticus. And the eighth chapter of that book, we're going to see what it is 
spirit of the Lord is trying to say to us. Because his spirit speaks expressly because we are in the end time. And I know we've heard that so many times. But as a prophet of God, I want to declare it. That we are not on our way to destiny. We are in destiny. Right this very moment. Everybody that is a part of this audience tonight is a part of divine destiny. It is an ingathering of your season. I want to say this to you. If you're sitting next to someone on your left and your right, behind you or in front of you, whatever you do tonight, don't let anybody distract you. Because tonight is a very important night in all of our lives. And you'll understand that as I begin to deliver you what was birthed in me. When you look at where we are in the last three months or so, was not completely surprised that the attacks would have come against me from the enemy because my inner man took a turn in the Lord in prayer. One Tuesday morning, I went to prayer to pick up the microphone to pray as I normally do when I begin the, the tradition of the way I start praying. And before I knew it, the Holy Spirit kicked me up in that prayer. It didn't take me to anything that was some supernatural divine revelation. But out of my mouth, I began to pray what I now know to be the will of the Father. I began to, the place was filled with people. And to my surprise, I began to pray the thing that were in my spirit that was hidden that I did not know was there. I tried to pull the microphone down from my mouth because there's just certain things when you're in the tradition of what you're doing, you just don't say in the microphone. And the Holy Ghost had my hand stuck and I began to pray, God, clean my mind. God, every spirit of unforgiveness that is there, wash me right now. God, whatever bitterness that I'm carrying, Lord, deliver me now. And I said to myself, God, people are listening. That's when he began to say to me that when the priests of the house get honest before me, then I can bring up people into honesty. He said, if you stand here and pretend to pray something that is totally not you, then you train a people to pray false prayers and my glory will never be revealed. And he said, you ought to be grateful that I've chosen to purify you because I can leave you clean and un, un, unworthy to be used. He said to me, who said that I have to purify you behind closed doors? Who said that? Who said that you can't come to God and be honest with the Lord? That you gotta do it in secret and try to hide it? So three months ago or so, I began to go to another level of freedom in my spirit. And I came to a place, people of God, where I realized that without the glory of God, I'm nasty. I'm unclean. I can be tempted and tried by the enemy without the anointing of God covering my life tonight. If it had not been for the grace of God, in an instant, my heart can be turned away from God. Oh, I don't know if you hear me tonight. 
What guarantees us that we become a permanent fixture in the kingdom? Who told us because we came to the altar one time? Oh, just bear with me tonight because I got to walk in something tonight. Who told us because we came to the altar one time and we had an eventful experience that right now, I came to the altar many years ago and I gave my life to God. And I repented of my sins. And then over the process, and I want you to hear this, over the process of embracing religion, I was being ushered into a spirit of backsliding and did not know it. Jesus. I had embraced the church, but I had not embraced God. And there is a difference than embracing an atmosphere and embracing God. Because when you embrace God, it really doesn't matter if the praise team is late. Because that's not where your praise begins. When you embrace God, come on here, church. When there's something that is happening in your spirit that is for real, then somebody can get up and they may not be in the best voice and they may just start singing, Jesus, keep me near the cross. And they may be in Z flat and F flat. But there's something about the voice of what they're saying. It identifies and it connects. When you get in God, you don't have to be entertained and everything don't have to be just right for you. And it doesn't have to be picture perfect. It just has to be God. You mind if I just walk a minute? If you just mind if I just, if you just let me take my time and walk a minute, there is a word from the Lord here. So then the Lord said to me that we're in the end times and you are a prophet. So where is your prophecy? And so I didn't understand that. And I'm like, well, God, I do prophesy and I do, you know, speak and I do uh, say what thus saith the Lord. And he said to me, but where is, where is the prophecy of destiny? The thing that you were born to prophesy. And in other words, how can I explain this? In other words, not just what comes out of your mouth, but, but, but where, when, when you are a real end time prophet, your very being prophesies. Everything about you begin to cry the thing that God has called you to cry with your mouth. See, too many people, too many people right now along in here are excellent prophets and they're hitting the nail on the head by prophesying things and stuff and whatever it is God's going to do in your life. But, but, but God began to say to me that the end time prophets will become the kind of people that your very presence have to shift the atmosphere of God. Lord have mercy. He said, because where we are now, I really don't have time tonight. If you were to line everybody up in here and as a prophet, and I begin to prophesy one by one, we would be in this place tomorrow. So then there has to be a different weight of the anointing that rests on the prophet so that when the prophets are among us their very bodies begin to break the shackles of Satan because the prophecies of God in this hour the real prophets are not prophesying stuff they're, they're not prophesying houses and cars and, and money and all of that. No, 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 not the real ones. And see, that's the reason why when you open up your mouth and begin to prophesy the real thing that God is calling for us to prophesy, you become controversial. And so God said, if in fact you're not being attacked and you're not controversial, then you have not been birthed into the real order of the prophet. Because at this hour, every true prophet, 
it ought to be able to see and weigh the balance of the church. We're not prophesying to individuals. We're trying to get a church ready to go back with Jesus. And we have to look at this church and see her shouting and dancing in all of her glory. And we have to be able to recognize that we've built buildings that we've never built before. That our sanctuaries are the most beautiful yes. city. Get that out, get this out, get this out. You this right here, your spirit ain't right right here. And I said, God, while I was, now see y'all looking at me like, no, that's what he said, that's what y'all think. And you are not going to send me to hell. I'm not gonna believe nothing y'all say about me. Oh, she's so awesome. She, no, 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 no. Not awesome, but broken before God. No, 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 not, not, not a one, not a voice of the nation, but somebody that's crawling back to God, just like you better start crawling back to God. You better not be impressed with who your members say you are and who your prayer partner say you are, because know this, that man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks at your heart. We ain't praying. We ain't praying. Oh, I got a prayer line. My, my prayer time is at 2 o'clock in the morning. You, you're not praying. No, no, no. And I'm going to tell you something else, too. A whole lot of us that speak in, in tongues do not have the Holy Ghost. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me because the Holy Ghost is not tongues. The Holy Ghost is not shalabakasabaha. The Holy Ghost is when you can hear the Spirit of God speaking up out of your belly and telling you something about you that's not pleasing in His sight. Because the Bible said that the Holy Ghost is a teacher and a guider and it leads you into all truth. You see, there are some rebukes that you've got to get that your friends ain't gonna never tell you. Now see, y'all looking at me all tight, y'all. Now I know I'm a real prophet. Cause they ain't got a whole lot of people smiling and waving now. Oh, I'm not hearing nobody say amen right there. There are some things that the Holy Ghost have got to speak to you about you when you leave camp meeting that your best friend won't tell you. And the minute you say, God, here I am, here I am, I'm back on the altar and let your blood anoint my ears. That's why the right ear had to be anointed so he can hear right. So the blood can go in and purify that ear and get that delusion out of your ear so you can hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to you. The blood is for purification. And so, Jesus, and so our ears are full of conversations of our life. Our ears are full of us. Jesus, Lord Jesus. Our ears are full of what people say. Whoa, and God said, did you hear me? Did you hear what I said? Did you, did you, well, well, I just feel like, I feel like I, you know, God just want me to go on a consecration. No, 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 we, we ain't got that. Because I just found out the other day, I don't have that right. Uh, Y'all can lie, I'm going to admit it. I didn't get that right. Because I thought consecration was seven days, okay? We're going seven day fast and we're going we gonna to consecrate. And we're going to, you know, Put our plate down and we ain't gonna eat no meat. We just gonna have fruits and vegetables. You know, well, first of all, when you're doing seven days, you know, then you ought to go liquids because you ain't going no long time. So then you can have, you know, juice. You can juice a steak if you can. Because you know, we don't do that right no way. We be juicing everything. And so that's seven days of juicing. And then if you're going three days, then you can have water and a little bit of juice. You go seven days, you can juice vegetables and all that. So then if you go 21 days, then that's the Daniel fast, where you go, you know, with uh, just fruits and vegetables, you know. And so then you don't eat no meat, you just drink juices, you know, you don't do no coffee, nothing like that. 
Then if you go 40 days, that's fruits and vegetables, and then you go like that for three of the seven days and 21 days, and then after that, you go liquids. Because then you say, I've been on a consecration. And so when I got before God and God said to me, I want you to consecrate, I started on my consecration. And I said, okay, now I'm be going. He said, 40 days. And so I said, all right, 40 days. That means fruits and vegetables. And about the third day into the consecration, God took me to this scripture. He said, can I show you something? He said, when I called Moses to command that Aaron and his sons come into the temple to consecrate, he said, I told them, take that ram, the ram of consecration, put it on the fire, take that blood, put it on the ear, put it on the thumb, put it on the big toe. And then he said something that, 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 that just shocked me. He said, and then Moses commanded that Aaron and his sons then eat the consecration. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. He said they had to digest the consecration because, oh God, he said, go into the temple and stay seven days, not because it was going to be a seven-day fast. He said, stay seven days because what I'm going to birth in you is an eternal consecration. You're not coming out of this. And that's what's wrong with the body of Christ. We're fasting seven days and going back to our old ways. We're fasting 40 days and going back to being mean and going back to being liars. But God said in the last hour, I'm calling for an eternal consecration. It's one that you go on and you don't come off. Wait, wait, wait. You, you just, you just, I just wish I had somebody to help you. You don't break it. Wait, 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 wait. Your spirit, it stays in intercession before God. <laughs> Whoa. Every day you start giving up. You know what? I really wish the camera would look at some of y'all's faces. Because, because I got people looking at me like, what, what in the world? Oh, we were never meant to consecrate temporarily. Lord Jesus. They were the priest of the Old Testament. Christ became the priest of the New Testament. And now we have been adopted into the royal priesthood. Why is it that Christ had to live consecrated every day of his life and that same Christ is in you? And you a part-time consecrated person. I'm, 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 don't bother me right now because because I'm on a consecration. Don't, don't call me right now because, because I'm consecrated. I said, okay, God. So you saying, you saying this ram, this ram, what is this all about? Why, why, why are you referring this to my lifestyle? He said, can I show you something? People of God, can I show you something tonight? When Abraham got ready, to offer up Isaac. He said, God, I'm going to do this. I'm going to obey you. I'm going to do your will. He got up there, Brother Joby, he got up there on the mountain where the sacrifice was. He laid his son up there. And an angel spoke out from heaven and said, wait a minute. He said, don't, don't, don't do that. He said, because, because the sacrifice is in the bush. God. Then God began to show me something. He said, that's why the body of Christ is praying. But we're not getting breakthroughs because your consecration is tied up in the bush. He said, it's time now to go and get your consecration out because you will never be able to operate in the word, not in this next level because I don't know if you notice it, but the level is changing. The weight of the spirit is changing. It's taking more now to get the anointing in the building. It's not like it used to be because God said the people that operate in the spirit, you're going to pay a price. You're not going to be an entertainer. When you get up and get the mic, everybody's going to know that you died to your flesh, that you've been through something to be standing up here. Why? 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 Because, because, because sin, let me tell you something, let me tell you something, the body of Christ have become, listen to this, listen to this, the body of Christ have become spiritual resistant. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Spiritual resistant. We're more full of ourselves, 
So it takes more to break you, because you think you already know. I'm, 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 not, I'm not getting nobody. I'm, I'm not getting a lot of people to, 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 to say nothing right here. See, see, in, in this atmosphere right here, you got a lot of people that come to camp meeting because I'm going to camp meeting because I'm going to get my charge. I'm going, I'm going to get filled up so I can go back up the Lord. But you don't understand the whole purpose of the atmosphere is not for you to come and get filled up, for you to come and get broken. Come on here, somebody. See, uh, see he said in his word that he's given us a measure of faith. He said, but to the Son of Christ, uh, I have given him my spirit without measure. That means if you really have uh, the spirit of Christ, you ought to be able to operate in stuff that nobody else operates in. Your very presence uh, ought to break demon shackles. When you walk in church and sit down next to somebody, your whole row ought to go into deliverance. What are you talking about with our legs crossed? Looking all cute. That's not what God has called us to become. people sitting in this place tonight with sicknesses in their body and they're sitting right next to you and you don't have an anointing to pick it up or cast it out y'all not gonna like me it's all right it's all right I'm gonna get the amens right there people sitting up in this church right now that contemplated suicide before they even walked in here. And you sitting up next to them, how you doing? God bless you. Ooh, there's no God like you. Now where is your spirit? Where is your anointing? I'm going to tell you what, you don't have one. You got a tangible anointing, but you're not filled with the spirit of God because before he can fill you, you got to empty out. Empty out. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, God. Okay, Lord. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. The, the, the children of Israel, Pastor, they wanted fire from heaven. Oh, they they wanted wonders. They wanted they wanted God to they Oh God. God, we want to see a miracle. Lord, you know, people people are parading. You know, Pastor Parsley. You have a healing anointing. Pastor Benny Hinn has an awesome healing anointing. And so, that's all who God called to do it? Y'all ain't gonna say nothing tonight and I don't care. So then, so then you got a few people that die out to their flesh and walk the level. And then instead of you dying out to walk in the same level, you try to make stars out of us. Oh, did you see what happened when one of the Bible preached? I'm not no star. Can I tell you something? There are some of you all that are sitting in here tonight that can have a greater anointing on your life than I have ever dreamed of. But God is waiting for your yes, Lord. He's waiting for you to break that spirit of pride out of your life and be broken every chance that you get. Now, why is amen's low right there? Because brokenness is a cuss word. Because when you get broken, you won't care that nobody call your name. When you get broken, you don't care they don't call you bishop, elder, minister. When you get broken, all you want to be is a servant. When you get broken, you send God to use me. Use me in the grocery store. Use me, God. Use me in the laundromat. Wherever you can use me, God. Just use me. It ain't got to be in the pulpit. It ain't, it ain't. And Pastor, I know, watch this, I, I know, I know that we don't have it. And I'm going to tell you something, this, 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 this changed me. This, cha this word changed me. Because he said, he said, I said, consecration. I'm looking at all these prayer requests and all these people that have sent in their prayer requests. Pray for my complete healing. Please pray for my children healing and my in-laws. I need the Lord 
to help me to stop smoking. Pray for me. Pray for my finances. Pray, Pastor Parsley. I believe Jesus, but I'm at a lack of faith. Pray for me. I said, okay, God. What? Who can move this stack? Who can? Who can? What person in here? Can physically get up and move all of these prayer requests with one push? Who can shift this stack from one place in this floor to the next? Nobody. But he reminded me of a people just like us. He reminded me of Eli and his sons in the temple doing the work of the temple, being a deacon, an usher, a choir member, a praise and worship leader. Y'all don't like me tonight, but it's okay. I'm in my call now. Y'all done messed around and gave me a few years to get up in it. Now, I'm in it now. You're going to have to just deal with it. He said, in here, performing the duties. But the Bible said, I don't know about shot you that they were sleeping around with the women in the temple gates. And Eli was being told about it. But he would not correct his sons because it was relatives. God, I'm hitting something in here tonight. A lot of stuff we refuse to correct because it's our favorite deacon. And, and oh, I ain't gonna find nobody faithful like him, but he's messing around with the secretary. You don't hear what I'm saying. We can't afford that kind of stuff. We cannot have soul ties to people that they interfere with the move of God and the house of God. I don't care how long you've been with me. If sin is in your life, you got to go because this church is on a move of God. He said, He said, They messed around. And, and Israel got in a battle, mother. And Israel got caught up in a battle. And here they go, Eli's, his sons. Oh, well, we know what to do. Let's just go get the ark. And we're going to bring the ark down here because in previous battles, you know, and in the book of Joshua, you know, when they went and got the ark, you know, God did something. So we're going to go get it. And we're going to bring it down here. We're going to put this ark in the battle. But the Bible said that when they got down there, not only did they lose the battle, but they lost their life. You know why? Because Eli hadn't taught them the principle of the ram's horn. He had not taught them the principle of purifying on the altar. He had not trained them to become consecrated. And what the Holy Ghost is saying tonight, you can't move nothing if your life does not have a life of consecration and prayer, eternal consecration, not temporary church highs. Oh, our service. Service was good. Our service, ooh, it was powerful. Our service, oh! Pastor really preached. How was, how, how, was, how, how was the service tonight? Oh, Judy Jacobs was anointed. Well, I got a pain right here. Can you pray for me? Well, let me call Pastor Parks in the ministry and see if the prayer line is still available. People living right in your house sick. And you on the prayer line. Let me call the prayer line and see if they can, if they can pray for you. Every time somebody gets sick and you around it and you can't get them healed, then it's God cursing you out. It's God confronting your level. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me because y'all act like you gotta be in his years to earn a level. No, nope, you gotta be broken to earn 
a level. You can be in here 10 days with a broken spirit and lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. If there is degradation still in your family, God's confronting you. If your sisters and your brothers are still on crack, then God is confronting you. If your mother is still an alcoholic, then God is confronting you. If your father is still a drunkard, God is confronting you. If your children are wayward, you're being confronted. God is letting you know where your level is. Oh, you can, you can come in here dance a jig and dance backwards and do the splits in the middle of the floor where all the saints say, ooh, that girl starts shouting. You can really see God on her. Ooh, when that boy start running around the church, you can really see, well, that ain't where we want to see it. Oh, no, 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 shut up. We want to see it because your no good drug addict brother walked into your house and when he looked at you, the power of God knocked him out and delivered him from drugs. That's what we want to see. That's what God. See, we ain't doing nothing in here. We ain't doing nothing. Can I make an announcement? All we doing is entertaining each other. We ain't doing nothing. See, cause I could say, y'all standing up saying, hey, I ain't doing nothing. Don't get impressed with that. I ain't doing nothing. Oh, ooh, that's powerful. I'm not doing nothing. I haven't done anything until you leave out of here. Uh, shout out Messiah. And lay your flesh on the altar and tell it to die until you come back next year and walk on your bench and say before service starts, is there anybody sick on this bench? Come on down here, because I got a healing anointing. Is there anybody that's depressed? I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Who am I talking to? Maybe I'm talking by myself. Maybe I'm just talking by myself here. No, 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 we ain't doing nothing until there's so many wheelchairs in camp meeting that we can't sit down. We're not doing nothing until prostitutes are sitting on these front rows with fishnet stockings on and being straight out under the power of God. That's when, that's when we have in camp meeting when the stars and the sinners come running saying, what must I do to be saved? We didn't, John, we didn't even come. Half of these people in here didn't even come dressed to get nobody saved. We, we, we didn't even come in here dressed to get nobody delivered. Matter of fact, somebody starts shouting, all strong, that's you, and you looking for the usher, push him, holding their back. I like, don't step on my shoes, jumping too hard. Ooh, help of Jesus. I ain't got nobody to say nothing. When somebody else start jumping in your row, you grab their forehead. Come on out of here, devil. You're in the right place. You sat next to the row. You sat right next to the right person. Uh, are y'all hearing what God is saying tonight? Because see, because see, consecration, uh, consecration ain't turning down food. It's turning down you. <laughs> Good Lord have mercy. Consecration ain't giving up pizza. It ain't giving up chicken. It's giving you up. Consecration is taking your attitude and your spirit and putting it on the altar and separating that mess from your spirit. Consecration is when you go into admitting and say, I'm a liar, I'm a cheater. I can't get it right. I got a bad temper. I'm getting ready to consecrate. What am I getting ready to do? I'm getting ready to separate myself from my soulless realm because I'm sick of my soul. Get in the way of my spirit. I, that's why I sung the song. My soul said yes. Because my spirit that already told him yes. It's my soulless realm that keeps fighting God's will. It, it's my soulless realm. Let me ask you one more time. Well, well who, can, who can move this? I'm trying to push it. It's hard as I said, come and help me push this. Come and help me. You push it hard. Are you pushing as hard as you can? Can you help me? Come and help us. We what we want to do is 
We want to push the whole thing. Push it from down here. Because you can push the top over, but just, okay, now let's push. See, let me tell you what we're doing. These are spiritual problems that we're trying to move with the flesh. And we can't move it. Spiritual needs, spiritual problems, healings and deliverance that we're trying to move with our flesh and we can move it because the only thing that can move a spiritual problem is a spiritual person. You gotta get in the spirit in order to solve the problems of the nation. You can't do it in your flesh. You can't do it with your religion. Your church ain't wonderful enough. It ain't big enough. Oh, the design. Is not wonderful enough because I tell you what, let me make an announcement. As tiny as you are and petite as you are, if you were really broken all the way, totally sold out, you by yourself can walk over there and lay your hands on that stack and everybody over there I'm not getting nobody, to, I'm not getting nobody to say nothing because, because what I got to do is, I got to tell you that some of y'all prayer partners is your biggest hindrance. I, I got to tell you, I got to tell you some of the people that you done hooked up with is your biggest hindrance. You, you, don't, you don't hear me, you don't hear me. Lord, I'm not getting nobody to say nothing in here. Let me just, let me just say this to you. See, because this ram, and I close with this, because I'm too full to preach this. I'm running too far to breathe. <laughs> See, first of all, a ram is an animal of war. Don't you ever forget that. A ram, he brings down walls and he opens gates. Some of y'all said, well, where you get that from? The Bible. Because in the New Testament, ooh, Jesus, Brother Joby, when it was time to bring down the wall of sin, a ram is a male lamb. And that's why God sent Jesus, a male lamb, to bring down the walls, to open every gate in your life that's been locked up. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. And a ram in the Old Testament, it brings down walls. It opened up gates. It is a sound. Somebody said, what do you mean by sound? What do you mean by sound? Because when God is calling for can consecration, he's calling for all of you. Let me just explain this right quick. After they took that ram, they cut it up. They ate the consecration. They tore the horns off of the ram. They tore the ram's horn off. And then they said, now this piece right here <laughs> woo, is going to be a mighty weapon in the hands of a believer that's eating the rest of it. This piece won't work unless you ate the body. You don't hear me. Oh, Jesus. Remember when Jesus said that to his disciples, eat my flesh, drink my blood, then you can make my sound. See, a lot of us are trying to name it and claim it and speak it and quote in the Bible. Ain't nothing being done. Lying wonder. You ain't moving nothing by quoting scriptures. All you got is a lot of head knowledge. You ain't got no power because you know what? You haven't eaten consecration. You can't make the sound of Christ until you have eaten Christ. You can't make the sound of power until you have digested power. And I didn't get nobody to say amen right there, but I'm moving. I, I, I'm moving because I... Because I know this is a little heavy, you know, you know, for the, for the ABC Christians who've been saved 10 years and still ABC messages. He said, he said, that this is what I want you to do. He said, he said, I want you to get that ram's horn. <laughs> and he said, I want you to take it and I want you to put it in the hands of seven priests. He said, y'all got a problem. He said, because you done got to the promised land and can't even go in. 
He said, I'm tell you what your problem is. Y'all got a wall <laughs> that's hindering you. There's a wall that's there. Now, y'all got to bring that wall down. And so they said to God, well, they're giants. We, we, well, all we got is us. Well, how, well, all we is a bunch of wives and children and people like that. We've we been in the wilderness trying to get here. We ain't been trained in no battle and, and no fighting and nothing like that. How we go? How we gonna do this? And there's giants over there. We, we can't get to the, we can't bring no wall of Canaan down. He said, I tell you what, that consecration that y'all ate in the wilderness, <laughs> the consecration that the priests, that they ate themselves, tell them to get that horn and get seven of them and put it in the hands of the priest. And he said, that's what I want you to do. I want you to take the priest with the trumpets and the horns and put them in front of the ark. Y'all have mercy, Jesus. And when they start to blow it, he said, tell them to march. In other words, the reason why he had them marching seven times is because when you eat consecration, you got to walk it out before you start trying to preach and tell somebody something. When you eat consecration, you got to walk that thing out. He said, when it gets around the walls seven times, he said, tell them, I said, to blow the trumpet. And the Bible says, said that when they blow the trumpet, he said the wall fell down and God began to say to me, that's why we can't bring the walls down in our cities and in our churches because we don't have a trumpet. We don't have a ram's horn. We don't have consecration. We're trying to move the word of God without consecration. We're trying to make it work because we quote the scripture. I got something to tell you about this. Let me read something to you. Let me read something to you that I found on the internet. The reason why we can't see. When people praise God in church now, something happened to me. When I hear people praise God in church now, I was like, that's weak. That's weak. Yeah, that's weak. That's weak. That, mother, that ain't no trumpet. You ain't, you ain't been through one test real good and passed it. So I don't care if y'all don't like me. I don't care this stuff. I really don't. I don't. I'm, I'm really not bothered this time. Because this time, I really know I'm in the will of the Father. Because he said this, he said, he said, when, when they use that ram's horn as a weapon, as a sound of a trumpet, it was torn from something that was sacrificed. So when you hollering, hallelujah, you ain't never been through nothing, you just make a noise in a building. You are not shifting no demons. The devil ain't even stunned you. As a matter of fact, he about to rip your clothes off you because Jesus, he know, but who are you? Talk about shandadadam. You better shut your mouth and go somewhere and get broken and go somewhere and digest purification and digest consecration because other than that, we're just a collective group of people. Oh, there, there, come on, come on, let's do it. Let's do a performance here. Come on, drama. Come on, horns, everybody pick your instruments up. Come on, play me some music. Yeah, make it sound grand like we always do. Yeah, 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 come on, come on. Come on. Yeah, I see, see right there. That's the sound that make us go, oh, oh, but no power. Because you know why? The sick is still sick. The dumb is still dumb. The blind is still blind. The lame still can walk. You don't hear what I'm saying? You don't hear what I'm saying? Revival have not broken out of my church. So what difference does that make? Because that's what we call the anointing. Now, we let unpurified people play. We let unpurified people sing. You all don't hear me. Praise and worship leaders ain't purified. They ain't taking me in the presence of God. You just up there singing the latest song that everybody done sang. No, 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 y'all ain't saying they don't come to prayer. <laughs> when was the last time they fasted? 
they always late for church. When they get through doing their thing, then they walk out and this is their time to go refix their makeup, have a tea break, get in the back room and talk a little bit. Then the pastor get halfway through his message and then they come back up because it's time to show again. It's time to, it's time to perform again. I'm not giving nobody to talk back to me. So, so maybe I'm just, I'm just going to preach to my own self right now because maybe y'all don't want to hear this. That, that, see, that's, and listen, listen. Anytime you in church, and I don't care where you came from and who church you came from, I got to speak the truth. If you have not given your life over the consecration, you're in the way. You are the stumbling block, not the sinner who we think is a stumbling block, because the sinners that come in, they measure the power of God by your life, and that's not much. You don't hear me? All they get is learn how to shout, learn how to speak in tongues, but can I cause a demon to be casted out? Can my very presence change an atmosphere when I walk in? What kind of an example are you? And I tell you how I know. Let me read my paper so I can go sit down. I'm gonna go sit down. I promise you. How do you make that noise, Pastor? I never saw this. How do, how do you make? How do they make the sound of a shofar? How does a ram? Lord, now I understand. Jesus, God, I got that. Then we don't have a real anointing. Everybody went. No, how, how much did you pay for it? Because gifts are free. The anointing is a cost. What did you pay to speak in them kind of tongues? Where you get them from? Did you copy them from somebody else? Is it a transference of spirit? Or did you get them tongues because you went through a trial and that's how God birthed you through to another level? Those tongues got birthed in you, which makes them a weapon. You had the Holy Ghost for real. He said, how do you make that sound? How does a shofar, when they blow it, what was it that caused it to bring a wall down? What was it? He said, to make a shofar, it has to be cut. Count you out. First sign of rebuke, out the door. First sign of correction, you gone. Cut. Cut. That means this gonna hurt you. That means there's some stuff I see in you. Let me dig it out. Let me tell you the truth. Cut. Because if I don't cut you, all you got is hallelujah, hallelujah. Now I know why when you, when you say, when you say praise the Lord, and you have people standing right next to you going, hallelujah, hallelujah. And these kind of kill me. Well, that's not how I praise them, huh? I, I, I really don't think that you need to holler like that because God ain't deaf. But he ain't nervous either. And according to my Bible, <laughs> according to mine, what brings down walls is a shout. And according to my word, the Bible said, and the Lord shall deliver with a shout. And not just any old shout. A shout from a broken vessel. A shout from a purified spirit. A shout from a real anointing. He said here, cut, boiled, softened, gut it out, gut it out. Watch this now. I'm gonna, Pastor, I'm going to lose half of the people in here now. Put under pressure. So while y'all crying, I can't take no more. I can't take no more. I can't. Shut your mouth. You're the one that said, Lord, use me. You're the one that said, yes, Lord. You're the one that came to the altar and said, God, I give up my all. Well, here it is. It's pressure.
And you know what? This is what I like about this. Right in the middle of pressure. Mm. While pressure is on, you just got through getting cut, boiled, gutted out. Good. You under pressure. Good. Then it says, the next thing, while you are under pressure, it takes the shofar and pulls it through the fire. You don't hear me, you don't hear me. While you under pressure, hey. then you gotta go through the fire. Hey. That means God lift. He put you in the fire while you under pressure. You don't hear what I'm saying. I can't get nobody to say that right there. While you under pressure, you go under the fire. Because guess what? He gotta take you through every form of what you gonna face. So when you get to the fire, the fire is subject to you. When you get to the boiling point, you already been there. When you get to the pressure point, you already been there. I've already passed this test. So when I'm, so when I'm pulled through the fire, then I'm twisted. I got to reshape you. Then you bent, and then you punctured, and then you bored out, and then you sanded, and then you inspected. Jesus. After you get through going through all that, he got to stand back and look at you. He said, let me see if you're ready. Let me see if you're ready. Let me see if you're ready to go. So then now, now, when you done been through this process right here, let me tell you what's happened to you. Now you got the sign. So now that's why I know now why sinners ain't coming to the altar. We ain't got the sign. Okay. Okay. Amen, Juanita. <laughs> now I know why it's time for revival and when we're in the era of revival but but in our individual churches we're going through a drought because we don't have the sign and the reason why we don't have the sign because nobody want to be made into a trumpet don't nobody want to be made to have the sign they don't have want to go to consecration so what i'm learning on my own with just me and jesus that that when i go through consecration and i'm cut up and I'm put on the altar and, and I'm sacrificing and giving up and then I let him gut me out and purify me then, then, then when I open up my mouth all of hell have got to shift and move and that's why when, when Gideon got ready to fight the battle God said you got too many folk here get me 300 and put a trumpet in their mouth and when they start blowing the Bible said that the enemy got confused and the devil turned on himself you don't have any problems what are you talking about I'm in spiritual warfare. You're in spiritual warfare because you don't have a trumpet. You're in spiritual warfare because you're not consecrated. Because what's in your mouth ought to be on the power to blow Satan right out of your life. Blow him out of your family. Blow him out of your finances. You got a weapon. I'm closing with this. I close with this. Because all I came to do is I ain't come to make you shout. You ain't got to shout. I want you to show. I want you to see one thing. So my little, my little stuff. These ain't my preaching notes. These, these is my notes. That he, that he said. He said what? What is the importance? <laughs> what is the importance of a man? that consecrates and holds a shofar. Shofar is a ram's horn. What are the benefits of a person that sell out to God? See, Judy, let me, just, let me just say this to you. There's a whole lot of people across this country that to them, they can sing circles around you. Hit all the high notes, the slurs, and, uh, all that. But there's something about your little raspy, raggedy, hoarse sounding voice that breaks us free. Cause I'd rather hear somebody that's been broken and got a trumpet in their mouth than to hear somebody that can, that can sing like a mockingbird and full of mess. You don't hear what I'm saying. I'm trying to help somebody understand that it is the anointing. And when you get broken before God, he'll take your little bit. He'll take what you say you can't do. He'll put the wind of the anointing in it. And you'll find yourself, God will pick you up and take you across. 
this country and people are still looking at Judy saying, why? Well, how did she get there? Well, how is she on Benny Hinn? Well, how? Because of the anointing, because of brokenness, because she got a trumpet. He said, let me help you understand something. Let me tell you why we need it. Let me tell you why you can't leave here tonight without making up in your mind that I gotta have this level that the prophet is talking about. Because the Bible said in my studies, in my Hebrew studies, it says that a shofar, it requires a response. The book of Amos said, can the trumpet be not blown and nobody respond? What am I just saying? What did I just say? When you start shouting in the sanctuary, in your kitchen, in your basement, under the anointing, and there's some stuff that's going on in your house that you done prayed about and you done fasted about and it still don't move. But when you come under consecration and you open your mouth and you start shouting, the Bible said it requires a response. Oh, come on, somebody. It also says that a shofar, when it is blown, it brings brings everything around it into order. Did you just get that? If your house is out of order, it's coming in order. If your kids are out of order, they're coming in the order. If your church is out of order, I double dare you to consecrate. I double dare you to get a trumpet in your mouth. Because the Bible said, when you blow it, it causes order. And this is the one that, that I like. Now I understand the difference between Saul and David. Now I understand that because Saul was anointed with a bile. David was anointed with a horn. Ooh, y'all didn't hear that. Y'all didn't hear that. And when they tried to move the ark without the anointed, they, they took it down there. Now this is the thing that, that God ministered to me. He said, don't use it another time. He said, don't get up in church hollering and praising me and going forth in ministry. He said, because let me tell you something. When they took that ark and tried to use it and it didn't work, they took it to three different tribes and it broke out with boils and they started dying. And the Holy Ghost said to me, Mother, that a lot of stuff that the believers are going through is not the test of the devil. It's because they've been using my word without consecration. And when you try to use it and you ain't consecrated, it will turn on you. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. I don't hear nobody saying amen right there. Come on, come on. You better let me help you right there. When you stop quoting scriptures and laying hands and trying to use God's word and you're not clean and you're not consecrated, it will backfire on you. It'll cause death in your house. Y'all ain't saying them because I know y'all are not used to prophets prophesying like this, but God said, these are the hours and these are the days that people are going to start dropping dead again in the house of God. People are going to start dying in their living rooms. People are going to start that. You don't hear me. Y'all don't want me to prophesy this, but I got to prophesy because judgment in 2004 will hit the nation and God said you will hear about unusual stuff happening. You will hear oh, what? listen, listen, listen. What just happened in Texas was just a piece of pie in comparison because God said we're about to get caught with our pants down. We're about to get Call it a mess. He said judgment is going to start. And people that's in the house of God, that's playing with God, you ain't got to worry about sister so-and-so that's keeping up mess. She going to have a stroke and die. We going to prophesy. You don't hear what I'm saying. You ain't got to put them out. You going to find them somewhere in a ditch with their throat cut because God said no weapon. Oh, y'all, they hear me. That's formed against the real church. Pastor. We've been hollering that scripture. No weapon that's formed against, against us shall prosper. But it ain't against us. Because we weren't even worthy to quote that. Y'all ain't saying that. Half of us wasn't even clean enough to talk about some weapon against you. You don't hear what I'm saying. That ain't to you. That's the consecrated soul that people. That's the people that's made up in their mind. I'm not going to touch nothing, handle nothing. I'm not going to put no evil thing before my eyes. I'm not letting nothing evil come out of my mouth. I'm going to watch everything I say. I'm going to watch everywhere I go. That's just the person that prays God and increase the power of conviction. Let me be convicted.
thinking about everything that I do that's not like you. I know, God, I'm getting a little, a little radical here. But, God, I got to be saved. God, I got to walk in victory. God, I got to walk with power. Lord, I got to be able to move this. Because let me tell you something. This is only a centimeter of a fraction of what's really out in the world. And we're supposed to be the church that's got the power. Oh, come on here, somebody. I don't hear nobody saying nothing. Where is it? Because he says here, and I close, that when you blow the shofar, two things happen. When I get consecrated, and I go on an eternal consecration, when I make up in my mind, this way that I'm going to walk, I'm going to walk, Circumspect. I'm going to walk careful for his presence. When I do that, the Bible says that it is an indication that the word is coming. When I get a shofar and consecration connected, somewhere behind me, <laughs> the word is about to work for me. When when when, when you see when you see that yourself right now, I'm looking across this audience and I'm looking at people like that man in that green t-shirt that's been crying just about the whole time that I've been up on the floor and just worshiping God. When you find yourself being around people that's walking with consecration, you're walking next to a person that God's getting ready to work for. See, 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 when, 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 when you hear somebody praising God, and I'm not talking about no hallelujah, thank you Jesus, oh, glory to but when you hear somebody crying up out of their spirit, then what, what Watch this, that's a person that God is about to answer prayer. Because the Bible said that when, when they came up on the mountain and, and the trumpet from heaven began to sound, the Bible said when the trumpet sounded, God answered. Maybe that's why God ain't answering, because a trumpet needs to be sounded. He said, when my people cry, I'm not talking about tears, cry out of your spirit. When there is a sound that comes up out of your spirit, that comes up by being broken and set apart for the master's use, God is obligated to answer you. And that's why we're in this place tonight. And you sitting here next to somebody that's too cute to praise him. And you all bound up. And you don't want to jump too much because you don't want them to get mad at you. And, and you don't want to yell too loud because, because they, they, they may have an attitude. But you got to tell your neighbor, I'm sorry. But I've been paying a price. God's been washing me. Oh, oh. God's been cleaning me. And I can't hold my pizza. Yell out because I'm in the presence of the Almighty God, and when I start shouting, God is about to answer me. Oh. Let me tell you one more thing. Now, 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 now this gonna get you. I ain't never been back here before, but I just feel late to walk back here. I just feel late to walk back here because I'm, I'm, I'm talking to some people back here. I'm talking to some people that say, well, I, I've been feeling like I want to burst all night. <laughs> I've been feeling like I just want to just run all over the place and, and I've just been kind of holding myself. But, but, but let me help you with something because I'm walking by and I'm looking at people I know have been in the fire. I, I'm looking at people that almost didn't make it to camp meeting because their enemy was raging. Oh yeah, I'm looking at folk that the devil did everything he can possibly think of to keep you out of here. Because you know why? Because the enemy knew that when you got here and you opened up your mouth, God was about to answer your prayer. He knows, oh, son of Australia, that the Lord is getting ready to deliver your household, your mind, your family. Your church! I gotta walk back here. Cause I done found some people. I'm looking at some folk that don't care that they didn't pass the pastor's church. I'm looking at some folk that's acting like they're from a storefront. And that's the way it is. When you get that thing, oh God. Somebody 
going to have to take that baby from her because God want to do something for her. Shala bakasaya. Mama, open up your mouth because God got something for you tonight. Hela bakasaya. God, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. God's going to use you, young man. God, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. I'm looking at some folk that says I'm not leaving out of this building until I get a chapter, until God birth a son up out of my belly. Who am I preaching to? Let me get back to my seat. But I'm looking at some folk now. I wish somebody would just grab a hold of this thing. And, and listen, 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 listen. I know you over here in the corner. Oh, Jesus. That's it, baby. That's it. Let it out. Let it out. Let it out. That's it. That's it. See, you look like you're from a little quiet church. But let it out. Some of y'all, some of y'all here tonight, they may not yell like that in your church, but God said, nevertheless, I brought you out here to put a hole in your spirit. They may not yell at your church, they may not have a trumpet in your church, but God said tonight, this ain't about your church, it's about your spirit. Now when I count to three, start shouting, because God said, one more walk but let me prove it to you let me, let me prove to you what's going to happen in here come on hold it hold it because here it come don't let it go Jesus I had to run back up here my scripture that God gave me for y'all. He gave this to me in prayer, and my prayer changed. Yeah, I used to be down there mumbling and bumbling. And God and angel. Oh, God, do. Stay right where you are. Don't move. Don't move. Don't move. Don't move. Because this right here came to be yours. And then I was, I was going through warfare. And I said, God, I can't take no more. And I had tears coming down my face. But the Holy Ghost reminded me, I broke you for a time such as this. He said, the trial that you've been going through is so that I can birth a trumpet in your mouth. And he took me to Numbers in fact, the 10th chapter in the ninth verse. Now listen to what he said. When you go, to war in your land against the enemy <laughs> that oppresses you, then blow an alarm with the trumpets that you may be remembered before the Lord your God and you shall be saved and saved from your enemies. I said, God, what are you saying? And he spoke this so plain. He said, never go to war without a trumpet in your mouth. Never go to war without opening up your mouth. And I'm not talking about some little mammy pamsy. Lord, I thank you. Some little religious praise because what's about to happen in here in the next 30 seconds, when you start shouting to God, you're going to shout out of your chest. You're going to shout in that thing that you're going through, that trial that you went through this year that you thought was going to take you out, the trial that you've been going through. God says shout out of that because you've been trying to shout out of the joy of the Lord but I don't 
I want you to shout out of the joy of the Lord tonight. I want you to shout out of tribulation. I want you to shout out of pain. And you shall be saved from your enemy. I command you in the name of Jesus to come under the authority of the trumpets in this house. You shall be misthrown. Your walls shall come down. The thing that you have done, you shall not be able to succeed. And the Holy Ghost said, and the enemy that you see now, you shall see no more if you give him shout. Because some of y'all, I just heard some of y'all say, well, you know what? You know what? That, I really don't shout like that. I, that's not the way I pray. And I know y'all, I know. I know when the children of Israel got to the wall of Jericho, I know there was some quiet folk. I know there was some shy people. I know there was some cute girls. That's a cute girl in every generation. I knew there was some cute girls that said, we don't shout like that. I don't holler like that. I don't. But see, understand something. What God is about to do in the overflow room, what God is about to do across the nation, he said that when they got to the walls of Jericho, the reason why he required that everybody shout because it was going to take a corporate anointing to drop that wall down. You don't hear what I'm saying to you tonight. So when you shout, and they playing this on international television, you're going to bring walls down in Japan. You're going to bring walls down in Texas. You're going to bring walls down in Africa. You don't hear what I'm saying to you tonight. You're going to bring walls down in, 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 in your Mexico. You're going to bring walls down over in Albuquerque. You're going to bring walls down in the Philippine Islands. You're going to bring walls down in London. In Paris, in all of Europe, you don't bring walls down. So you're not shouting for yourself. You're shouting for the nation. You're shouting for the world. Shout! Shout! Come out here, shout! Shout till you get a breakthrough. Shout till you feel the power. I got to do it because God told me to do it. If you sitting next to somebody and you didn't hear them, move from them. Right now, if you, don't be scared, don't be shamed. Don't be shamed. I said, if you sitting next to somebody and while you were shouting, you didn't hear nothing coming from their side, just, just take a few steps over because yeah, because, because the Holy Ghost said, no religious hindrances tonight. No, come on, stay there, stay there. No religious hindrance tonight. No traditional hindrances tonight. Not tonight.
right there when I start dancing and shouting blow the Holy Ghost took me up he took me up somewhere for a minute there and he just revealed to me what it was he said tell the people that though they're going through though they're blowing a trumpet because they're going through 
I want them to shout because they already got the victory. So I want them to shout and dance. Hey! 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 Come on here! Come on here! He says shout! that you ain't never gave him before. See, some of y'all shout like you always shout, but you don't know what just happened in here. You don't know. You don't know that in less than 24 hours, God gave me a word. He told me, he said, when you hooked up to this revelation, this is what you call a 24-hour miracle. He said, consecration plus a shout. Consecration and a trumpet equals instant miracles. They didn't shout and the wall fell last week. They didn't shout and they took the wall two months to fall. The minute they shouted, it fell down. So the Holy Ghost said, if you believe God, open up your mouth. And when you shout, it's coming down the night.
Right. God, I wish I had some radical saints in here tonight. Ooh, I think I do. I wish I had some folk in here that's got the I don't care spirit. I wish I had about 30 people that had that spirit on them and said, I don't care what I look like. I can look like David. I can dance my dance out of my clothes. But all I know is that the Lord has given me the victory. Shut up, Okosana. How do I know tonight? That it's a real victory. Because it's a victory. It's a shout. Pastor Joby, it's a shout that's combined with consecration. That is a heaven combination. If you want to know the combination to heaven tonight, it's consecration plus a trumpet equals the answer. Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? I double dare somebody tonight to go out of this building saying tonight, this is it. I am now on an eternal consecration. I'm not coming off. Shut up, I'm on an eternal consecration. I'm getting up every morning and asking the Lord, what do you want me to sacrifice today? If you want me to sacrifice no cell phone, then I'm turning it off for the whole day. If you want me to sacrifice TV, then I'm not watching it. If you want me to not eat nothing all day, but God, I vowed, I vowed this, saints. I vowed this to the Lord. I said, every day, I'm entering into an eternal consecration. That means every day, I'm giving you permission to tell me to give something up. Because what I have on the altar 
is greater than what I have in my flesh. And I'm tired of not having the victory. I'm tired of being bound up. I'm tired of my family not being free. I'm tired of my church going through changes. I'm tired of my city being overtaken with drugs and alcohol. I'm ready to move that. I'm ready to move the power. I wish I had somebody and say, God, I'm entering into an eternal consecration because I'm ready to move the power. Somebody say, I'm ready to move the power. I'm ready to move the power. I'm ready to have a power like this stacked up in my living room, stacked up in my prayer closet. You don't hear what I'm saying. The stack like this don't just belong in the church. You should have one in your prayer closet. Your walls in your prayer closet ought to be covered with prayer requests and, and pictures and, and, and all kind of people mailing you. Oh, come on here, somebody. Your own prayer closet ought to be filled with people's t-shirts and towels. The Holy Ghost told me tonight to ask you, Pastor, before I leave this city, Get me one of your son's t-shirts Because I'm talking about real intercession now I'm not talking about somebody who I'm praying for No, 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 no He said it's time now for that to be moved It's time for the power to be moved It's time for the power of issues in our life to be moved It's time for the power of issues in our church to be moved Are you hearing what I'm saying? God said go out of here Collecting stuff Asking people that you know that need deliverance Give me a pair of your pants Give me a pair of your shirt Give me your t-shirt. Let me hold on to an old tie because I'm going to hold it up in prayer. I'm going to pray over there's my connection. You don't hear what I'm saying to you. It's not just for him to have people to send in handkerchiefs. But honey, let me tell you something. We better start collecting ties and shirts and shoes and socks. Oh, come over here, somebody. You ought to say, look, Pastor, I'm bringing a pair of my son's socks. I just want you to pray over his basketball jersey. I just want you to pray over his basketball shirt. I want you to take the sweatband that he wears around his head when he played tennis because I want him to be delivered. Who am I preaching to tonight? Never go to war. Never go to war without a trumpet. Because remember, if you don't have consecration, you can't move the power. If consecration is not in your life, you cannot move that power. Because the things that need to be moved in our lives are spiritual. If we can't move them in the flesh, but the scripture said as I leave this floor, Romans 1 presents your body a living sign holy and acceptable under God follow the pattern here the ram went on the altar in Genesis with Abraham the ram went on the altar in Leviticus for consecration and purification the lamp once again went on the cross <laughs> and died for our sins. Now in order for us to house the power of that lamp, we got to put ourselves on the altar as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, not as a every year event, but as your reasonable service. He said to me, stop making consecration something special. Every January, the whole church consecrate. No, make it eternal. <laughs> Not eventful. Around Easter time, we all go fast for seven days to the Passover night. Eternal. Make consecration a lifestyle. Make prayer your living quarters. And if you make consecration a lifestyle and prayer your living quarters, your trumpet will never fail you. What a word. Your trumpet will never, what comes out of your mouth will never let you down. Now, 
whatsoever I say, I shall have. See, we got that all mixed up here. Whatsoever you speak, you're going to have it. Whatsoever you say, he ain't talking to you, unpurified self. He talking to this pattern right here. You follow this pattern, and then whatsoever you say, you shall have. Then you shall speak those things would be not as though they were. Then your mouth can transform. Then you can create with your mouth. Then is life in the power of your tongue. Your trumpet has no business failing you. And if you've been praying something and speaking something that has not come to pass, then go back and add consecration and then blow again. God, God I love that. God, I love that, Pastor. God, that just did something down in my spirit. I felt chills go all down my legs. If it ain't working, go back and get consecration and be in traffic again. And every time you speak it, every time you shout, you don't get no results. Go back to consecration. Because one of these days, you're going to purify to a level where your trumpet going to work. Before I take my seat, turn and tell your neighbor, when I leave out of this place, I got to get my trumpet to work. <laughs> so I, I got to get my trumpet to work. Mama, I got to get it to work. It, it, it works sometime. But, but, but tell somebody, and you know what? When I leave out of here tonight, I'm going home back to wherever I came from. Because you know what I'm going to do? I'm, next year, my trumpet going to be working. I got to get my trumpet to work. I, look, I got too many situations, too many issues. Come on, tell your neighbor that. I got too many situations, too many issues, too many family members that are bound up, too many things that I want God to break open. I got to go back and get consecrated because you know what? Matter of fact, tell them about this time tomorrow, my trumpet going to start working. I don't know about y'all. Tell somebody my soul is saying yes tonight. Tell your neighbor my soul is saying yes tonight. And tell your neighbor by this time tomorrow, my trumpet is going to start working. God, I wish somebody would just shout right there. I just wish somebody would shout right there. I gotta help you. I gotta help you. Because y'all don't let me help her. I'm gonna say it again. Some of y'all look confused when I said that. By this time tomorrow, my trouble gonna be working. Because I keep trying to tell you it ain't days, it's a decision. You can't do 21 days for this. You can't do 40 days for this. This is a decision. And if you make the decision tonight that I'm going to live a life of consecration, then your trumpet will work by this time tomorrow. I just wish somebody would just grab that and just start praising it. Move. Yeah, you're going to be doing stuff like that. Get out of my way. Satan, I rebuke you. Devil, shut up. Come out of here. And he's coming out now, not tomorrow, now. Get out of my finances. Get out of my church. Get out of my members. Take your hands off of my children. And I'm not talking about next week. I'm talking about now. Come on here, somebody. Tell somebody I feel my trumpet starting to work already. Tell somebody I feel my trumpet starting to work already. It's already starting to work. Because I'm already getting my spiritual authority. I'm already speaking with holy boldness. Tell the devil, come out, come out. Come out of my son. Take your hands off of my finances. Your trumpet is working right now. I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go. All over this building. God is moving in some people. I'm looking at him. I'm seeing the Holy Ghost. Oh, Oh, son, lift your hand, son. In that black suit.
I just heard the Holy Ghost that I'm transforming you. I'm transforming you into consecration. I'm transforming you. Come on, receive that. Receive it and your trumpet will work tonight. You won't have to guess another day whether or not God heard your prayer. Come on, God's doing something right now. Right now, I, I can't explain it, but I, if you were standing where I was standing, you could see the people that God is, he's bending them over. He's, he's slaying them out because this ain't something that you can do in your flesh. This is grace. This is the favor of God that have hit this building. And he's transforming your spirit from carnality into consecration. And if you would just reach up and just receive it. We need the fire. We need the fire. We need the fire. Brother Myron, can you do that? Just, just right quick, just right quick. Right quick. He, he, he's doing something. In, I, I'm sorry that many of you may not be feeling this, but I'm looking in the audience. I'm seeing it happen to people. Just close your eyes for a minute. Close your eyes for a minute. He's doing it. He, he's taking you out of the realm of carnality. You won't even be able to go back to being the person that you were before you came here. Show about my memory. We'll see Kenny the Bobo in the Mahani. He's an animal in the Mahan that the beast get the bush in the back up. He did the bush, he did the book in the Mahaya. He said the book who she did the Baha did the bush. Shoot another to the bush. Come on, let him do it. Let him do it. Let him do it. Let him do it. Come on. Come on. Just 30 seconds. He's going to do it. Come on. He's going to do it. Just begin to reach up and tell him yes. All you got to do is begin to say, yes, Lord, yes, for real. Yes, I surrender for real, I for real. Come on, come on, we need the fire, come on. Come on, come on, surrender. Come on, he's doing it, and I'm looking at him do it. I'm looking at him do it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He is my desire. Oh, let it fall on me. <laughs> we need the fire. We need the fire. Do it in me, God. We need the fire. Do it in me, God. Do it in me, God. It's my desire. Come on, lift your hands up. So let it fall. So let it fall on me. So let it fall. Oh God, don't pass me. On me. Don't pass me, my Lord. So let it fall. Oh God, do it in me, Jesus. Father, after I preach to others, don't let so me go. Can't see. Oh so let it fall. Yes, Lord. On me. Yes, Lord. So let it fall. Yes, Lord. On me. Me God. Me God. So let me it God. fall. Me God. On me. So the world can see We need the fire We need the fire Come on singers, help us sing it This is the simple song We need the fire We need the fire We need the fire It's my desire Come on, lift your hands and say, 
My trumpet is going to work. I'm determined. It's going to work, brother. It's going to work in my car. It's going to work in the grocery store. I'm going to live so I can blow my trumpet. to work every time. Every time. I'm not in a position where it can fail me. And I say it again as I yield this floor. You give him a life of consecration and your trumpet will never fail you. Never fail you. You will begin to amaze people because it'll come out of your mouth. And as quick as you say it, you will see God perform it. Because my life of consecration moves it. My trumpet works because my life gives it power. The song 
when I was growing up in the church, they used to say, I'm on the altar. I want you to bless me. And I have changed my mind. I'm on the altar every day. I don't care no more. I'm on the altar. Because my trumpet got to work. I ain't got no more pride. Father, here I am again. If I've done anything to offend you, if I've done anything to dishonor your word, if I've walked in unbelief, if I've walked in any form of disobedience, forgive me. Because I need my trumpet to work. I need to be able to speak it and the enemy knows that I'm talking. I need to be able to say it and all heaven backs me up. All over this building tonight. I attempt to leave this building. Tonight God wants something different. He spoke this to me on my way over here. I've had many challenges in the two months prior to me coming here. Many physical challenges. I've had pneumonia in the hospital for nine days. According to the enemy, my, my lungs are still not really working. And when I'm not preaching, I, I feel all closed, like my chest is closed. But when I begin to preach, God just opens it. He just opens it. And I'm here to tell you, we ain't got time. I don't have time. I've canceled so many speaking engagements because I don't have time to be an itinerary preacher. I'm moving under a prophetic mantle now. I don't have time for people to say, oh, this is my cousin, Junior, and he got a church in California. Can you just come and know? My steps have got to be divinely ordered by God because I'm under a different mantle now. I'm not impressed anymore. I need my trumpet to work. And all over this building, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me when I was coming here. He said, tonight, I want a consecration seed. I want a consecration seed. He said, Father, what is a consecration seed? He said, a consecration seed is a seed that's bigger than you can afford to give. He said, a consecration seed is a seed that you give out of your spirit and not out of your flesh. And as I stand on this floor tonight, a consecration seed is a seed that you give. That you say, God, I believe in my consecration and I believe in my trumpet. And therefore, I believe that if I sow this amount, my trumpet will bring it back. I'm not moved by it. There are people all over this building tonight, and I can hear this in my ears. I can hear this in my ears, many of you in here tonight. And do it quickly. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Do it quickly. The Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, many of you in this building tonight, he want you to sow a hundred dollar seed and do it quickly as a consecration seed. Do it quickly. Run down here and put it on the altar as quick as you can. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Put it on the altar right in front of me as quick as you can. He said, don't grieve me. Don't grieve me. He said, as quick as you can. He said, quick, don't grieve him. There are pastors in this building tonight 
the Holy Ghost said, give him a thousand dollar seed and don't grieve him. If you a pastor in this building tonight and you have it anywhere in your church treasure, God said, do it and don't grieve him tonight. Because it's a level even for your church. You sowing seeds of consecration even for your church. You a pastor in this building, don't grieve him. Don't grieve the Holy Ghost. I can't talk to anybody. Don't grieve the Holy Ghost. He said, many of you in this building, he's calling you to sow that $100 seed. He said, it's a consecration seed if you a pastor. He said, you sow that $1,000 seed. That's all you may have in your treasure. But God said he's doing something in your church. Because it ain't no normal often. It's a consecration seed. That's what he said. Move all over this building. Wherever you are, get up out of your seat. He said obedience to him tonight. Don't grieve him. Because I don't know about you, but I'm going to another place. I'm going to another place. Give me the fire. Oh God, I love you tonight. Some of you say it's my last hundred dollars. I don't know if I. It's a consecration seed. It's a seed that you step out and give out of obedience. You give it out of your spirit. You don't give it out of your knowledge. You don't give it out of your flesh. You say, I really can't afford to give this. But in the Holy Ghost, you can't afford not to give it. Come on, everybody, come on. If you stick there, just lift your hands up. If you're in your seat right now and you say, I don't have a hundred dollars, then bring God a consecration seed. What is a consecration seed? It's the biggest seed that you can afford to give God tonight. And get up out of your seat and come. That's what the Holy Ghost said. If it's $30, if it's $50, if it's $20, you gotta sow something under the consecration anointing. That's it. Get up out of your seat all over the building. Yes, Lord Jesus. So let it fall on me. So let it fall. Yes, Lord. That's why you ought to be standing all over this building. $20, $30, $30. It's a consecration seed. It's a seed that I give out of my spirit tonight. Because I've been changed. I'm going to another place. Come on, move quickly. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So the world. Hey, I will go in. Oh, do it, Father God. Do it, Father God. It's a ministry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, everybody sing it. We need a fire. Come on, if you're yes, in the building, come on, sing it.